Hi, this is Alan with iIllusionist.com. I'm wearing my Rastafarian hat today. Um, my parents just went on vacation uh, to Jamaica and they got me this cool hat. So I'm wearing it just to show my appreciation for the hat. Okay, so that's the story. I'll probably change up and should probably be doing a couple of videos with strange hats in my collection over time. But I'm going to start with this one. Uh, today I have Jenny Nicholson on the camera today. She's helped me out. She's being really awesome. So thank you, Jenny. And maybe we can get her on camera later to uh, recognize her. She's shaking her head no, so. But she's been really helpful, so. Today we are doing the Anglo Rugbacks, and we're doing the uh, red and gold. Basically, all the, uh, the deck colors are, I mean, they handle the same. That's not a big deal. I just have the red and gold for right now, but that won't affect any of the uh, handleability, really. So, I'm going to show you the box a little bit. These have, unfortunately, been crushed a little bit, but not a big deal. Okay, um, there it says Anglo, office in Sweden, that's where they're made, Boss finish, a lot of this is in Swedish, I believe, so I'm having some difficulty reading it, but that's the box, okay. Now I did get these, I'll let you know, I got these from Pokerstad 52 if you're looking for them, you can get them there, he's got this and he's got a lot of the other varieties and a lot of other cool stuff that you should check out, so, um, Without further ado, let's get into the review. Uh, they they fan really well right out of the box. They have a very different feel to them than you used to. Um, most notably, uh, the corners. They're cut a lot more round than they generally are uh, with a lot of other decks that you may have tried. Okay. Um, they also don't feel like uh, any other deck of cards you've ever felt before. Not United States Playing Card Company, not Cardamundi. They are... Um, I would guess I would call them stickier, um, which is actually a really great thing for cardists and magicians doing uh, double lifts or secret moves, whatever, um, doing your your worms and all that kind of stuff. They work really well for that. They stick together whenever you need them to and uh, fan real well. Now this one's been beat up a little bit. I have been playing with this one a lot, so I'm not getting the fans that I want to on it. Um, that's one thing you do have to take into consideration is that without, oh, and I got studio lights for creating a lot of glare on there, but you can see there's some inconsistencies in there. The very thin borders make it a lot easier to tell when you screw up a fan. So take that into consideration. I won't call you guys noobs, but newcomers, um, that is something you need to think about. Okay? If you want to do that, uh, Trashman also suggests getting the borderless ones, getting like the white with the uh, black or the red or whatever. That'll help a lot go a long way towards um, covering up inconsistencies in your fans. Okay. Also, I'll talk about the cut a little bit. The cut is a little bit different. Um, they're not exactly smooth, but they're kind of smooth. It's uh, it's a little interesting. A little bit. It took me a little bit of time to get used to. It almost feels like every other card's like a stripper deck or kind of holding a Svengali deck. Um, but in any case, it's it's just a, a feel you have to get over what you're used to. Okay. Beyond that, they're really great. I have not powdered these yet. I don't like to powder them before I do my reviews. I want to show how they fan out of the box, okay? So these haven't been powdered. I hear that you get a lot of success with them after you powder them in, but they do take a while to break in, okay? Also, a very, very stiff cardstock. And I'm shooting cards all over the floor there. Um, very, very stiff cardstock. These are very durable, last a long time, and um, very, very cool deck of cards. They come in, like, I don't know, what is it, like 12 different variations, all kinds of different variations. Don't quote me on the 12, but um, quite a few. And they have inverse, so they have like uh, a gold back with red, or white and black, or black and white, and all different variations and combinations, and they're all very, very cool. Uh, I'll show you the, the jokers. Those are kind of interesting in the court cards here. Let me see if I can find the ace of spades as well. Okay. Do, 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 do. Where's the ace of spades? Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. So, Jokers. It comes with three Jokers. There's one with black in the four corners. Says Joker. All right. One that says red in the four corners. And then there's another one that I just passed up a second ago because she was helping me pick them up off the floor. Lovely, awesome assistant. And the one with the stars in the four corners. Okay. 
I don't really know what you use the jokers for. They're always great for, you know, creating gaffs or whatever if you want to uh, s split them, whatever you want to do. And the Ace of Spades, um, pretty boring, actually. That Normally, you know, I'm like simplicity, there's beauty and simplicity. I'm all about that. Rene Levand. Uh, but not not really digging this Ace of Spades too much. The, the center pip is smaller than the than the jumbo pips. And that's another thing that um, Trashman was pointed out very nicely is that fans from the front, it's really hard to see all of them. If you do a great fan, okay, you got a little bit more of, I think I got another card in there. Yeah, I got a, a Hoyle card. I don't know where that came from. It's probably doing like my eight card brainwave or, brainwave or something. Um, that looks okay, right? But, um, yeah, just take that into consideration. That is going to be hard if you're a magician unless you're doing smaller fan. Um, with like half the cards, they won't be able to see all of the cards. That is one consideration. I wish they would make these in standard poker size. Um, I do like large index. I think they're easier to see, especially when you're doing magic for a slightly larger audience. But um, that leaves me something to be desired. They're really hard to see. Okay. Um, one other thing I'll show you in here before I go is I'll show you the Ace of Hearts, which I ha think is kind of interesting, and then a couple of the court cards, okay? Alright, so the Ace of Hearts seems to be like the, the one special ace with note, and I'm not sure if that's a cultural thing in Sweden, that the Ace of Hearts has a special significance or not. Um, I don't know. But it's got like a little, it's got their little office in Sweden with a little, I don't know, it looks almost like a unicorn or a stag or something of that nature, which is kind of interesting. Okay, And then I'll show you a couple of these core cards here. I'm going to show you all of them because it would be boring. Um, but they got kind of like a new Art Deco kind of look to them. Kind of new stylized. Um, but still stay pretty true to the, uh, the idea of the ones you're used to. Just kind of interesting. Um, Again, uh, I'll, I'll go over kind of the recap, everything. Um, they, they do fan well after you break them in, especially if you, if you put uh, powder on them. The cut takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's alright, it's not a big deal. Um, they are very springy, and they take a while to break in, okay, but they'll last you for a while. Very sturdy, very, uh, very durable deck of cards. The, uh, the colors on them are really cool. We've got so many different varieties. Uh, just think of the possibilities as a magician, what you could do with that. Um, with so many different varieties on the same theme. You know, you get these bicycle cards that you got the you know Black Tiger, let's say. Or you've got the, uh, the Brown Poker, or the Brown Bicycle Deck, or any number of the Twilight series, or whatever they want to call them. The Fashion Decks. But, you know, I know a lot of people will collect those because they can interchange the cards and create all kinds of new interesting effects. Think about what you can do when you've got all of those and they're easy to find and they're made all the time. So, very cool. Um, I give this, I'm going to start doing uh, ratings on, on here. This is, again, I don't know if this will help me stay subjective or not, but uh, I'm going to give my own personal rating. Understand that this is uh, only my opinion, okay? And that um, you should really try any of these for yourself to find out really. Uh, what you think about them. Don't take just my word for it, okay? But um, if I was to rate these cards out of a possible five, I would rate these at probably about a, uh, a four, four and a quarter, about there, okay? Now, that's taking into consideration that something like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say watermelon bees. Watermelon bees I would probably rate probably about four and a half, five, maybe. So, Keep that in, that's a sliding scale, and this is just really done off the cuff. Um, my opinions of these may change, um, but I do like them quite a bit. If they were a little cheaper, I would use them all the time. So That's, uh, that's my review for the Anglo Rugbacks. I hope you enjoy it. If you like what I do here over at iIllusionist, comment, rate, subscribe. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, what you'd like to see more of, and um, if you have any decks that you want reviewed, let me know. I'm also working on a couple of other projects that I would like if you guys would keep an eye on for me. Um, some stuff I'm doing with some kind of big famous name magicians. Nothing set in stone yet, but working on it. So I might have some really cool news for you guys coming up pretty soon.
Alright, without further ado, my name's Alan. I'll see you guys around. Mm.